Welcome, I'm Julie Samaka with Southern Charm Wreaths, where we make beautiful wreaths and teach you how to make and sell them. I want to welcome you to my Facebook page. Um, this video, I thought we would get together and make a Halloween wreath. Um, so let's get started. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, in this video, again, we're making a Halloween wreath. And please forgive me, my contacts today are so dry. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I hope I can see what I'm doing. All right, so I've got a couple of things I want to show you. I've got this super cute um, sign. Maybe I should zoom in just a, a hair. I've got this really cute sign. Um, I found this one at Michael's, but I just liked how it was black and white. Um, I thought that would be real cute to work with. And then we've got this, what size is this? This is a, it doesn't say what size. I'm assuming it's about an 18 inch. It looks like it's about 18 inch wreath, but it's, painted already. Don't you love this? I don't know if the, sh the light will shine on it, but it's a one side is sparkle and glittery and then the other side is the um, just regular painted. So I was trying to decide, I really prefer this this side, not the glitter, but I'm going to go ahead and use it on the, gl the glitter side because I just felt like it would rub off on the door if I um, put it on the other side. So I'm going to um, do it on the, the correct side. It came already painted and glittered. I got it at Michael's. They had other colors. They had black. They also had a white with gold um, paint on it, which I would highly recommend you getting. And then you could go to my blog and learn how to make the uh, New Year's Eve wreath because that's the exact wreath that I used for that tutorial. Um, but I liked that these are already painted. Now you can paint them yourself if you want to. You can get a grapevine wreath and you can, you know, paint um, using Kryline spray paint or Rust-Oleum, whatever you prefer. Um, and then you're going to want to make sure you get it from all angles and then definitely you're going to want to turn it over on the, and get it on the back. Um, even though you think that it won't show through, it will. So you want to do all sides in front and back. So I got this cute little sign, like I said. And then I found these, um, I don't know what they are. They're fuzzy, black, and really messy. But I thought that that looked really cute with it. So you can see there, it's like shedding all over the place. And then I have some other things that I've just found. Some black glittered picks. And um, I just loved these white flowers. I thought they would go really pretty with the sign. And then I have some black and white ribbon. Who knows what we're going to do with it. Um, the first step you want to do, I have no plan, you guys. I'm just going to try to wing it tonight. Um, the first step you're going to do is you're going to want to staple pipe cleaners to the back of your sign. So to do that, I first uh, put it down on the wreath. And I just positioned it just a little bit, you know, around the wreath. So I wanted to try to get, you know, the best, the best angle. So I'm like, okay, this could work right there. I wanted some of the grapevine showing. I didn't want to, you know, I don't, if it's a painted wreath, you don't want to cover it all up. You want it showing. So you just kind of play around with it and then you position the sign where you want it. And then once you've got it to a position that you like, that's where you take the sign and turn it over and you staple your pipe cleaners to it. And then I went ahead and hot glued on top of the pipe cleaners. So you can see right there where I've hot glued on top of the pipe cleaners. So that's just gonna secure uh, the pipe cleaner onto the um, sign a little bit better. So right now, all I'm going to do is wire this in. And hopefully this will be the hardest part. 
because um, sometimes it's a little tricky getting these these sides in. So when you wire your um, sides to the wreath, you want to make sure that it's secure. And I like to secure it in three places. I'm wondering if I move this over far enough. Because if I don't move it over far enough, it's almost it'll make it look like it's more off center. Then I think we're good. I want to make sure that it doesn't look like I've just messed up and didn't put it in the center. <laughs> Does that make sense? I really want it to be off centered. So we are taking the pipe cleaners just around. I'm not taking it around the whole wreath. I'm just doing a couple of, um, catching a couple of pieces of the grapevine. Let me just clean up some of this. Give it the shake test. I think this one needs to be a little bit tighter. Okay, and then we just cut off the excess. go ahead and hot glue my business card on the back on top of that that piece of uh, price tag right there all right so we have that positioned and the next thing I want to do is just start layering the pieces in and let me go ahead and get my um, pick machine Ugh out and this thing is heavy all right let's see if we can get this going all right so i was thinking about instead of putting it up on the wreath easel today it's just doing it here on the table so that you guys can see a little bit better um i'll go ahead and angle this down and zoom in a hair so you can see somewhat better I'm just cutting these off the ends Of the um, the stem, so we just want to separate these, and I think I definitely want these to be fluffy, you know, a little bit spread out, just a little bit more. Let's see where I can place these. I'm not sure yet. I've gonna. You always want to place your items in first before you just start hot gluing. It, it will make your life easier, I promise. <laughs> Unless you've made a bazillion thousand of these and then you, you know, then you don't necessarily need to do that. These things are so messy. They are shedding. Ugh. I'm going to put these in just a hair more. <clears throat> I'm 
just spreading these out a little bit. I just love them. I might have to make them a little smaller, you guys. I might have to just cut them, make them a little smaller because they do poke out pretty far. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to cut it in the middle. So I find where the stem is going down the um, center and give it a cut. Okay, I loved the spiky part of this um, bush. It seems real creepy <laughs> to me. Perfect for a Halloween wreath. I'm wondering if I'm gonna put the bow here. I wasn't planning on doing a bow, but I need something to eventually go this in, in this direction, so. Move that there. And then I could just fill in down here and maybe over here. I don't know if you can see my table, but it is so messy. This stuff is really shedding. I think it's looking good though. All right, so um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue these in and then I will pick it up and show you what I've, what I've done. Now I'm thinking I should have had my glue pan instead of my glue gun, but we'll see. I don't know. So when you decorate for Halloween, do you do a creepy kind of decoration or are you a cute, whimsical, you know, decorating? What kind of, uh, what kind of decorations do you like to do for your Halloween decor? Maybe you don't need to decorate for Halloween. Some people I know don't do it. gosh this is a mess so this is what we've got so far <clears throat> so you could see how it's just a fanning out look and it doesn't look very pretty right now <laughs> hopefully we can make it look a little bit nicer All right, so it seems like I need something right there, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And I'm going to go ahead and wipe some of this mess off into the floor. All right, so the next thing I have are these glittered picks. I was thinking about using them one at a time, but now I think I need to go ahead and divide some of it up. So this is going to add another layer of texture. And 
it's going to help to fill out spots. So I'm just going to take some of them. Some of the pieces are off, and I love when you can find pieces that bend. Isn't that cute? <clears throat> to me, that's when you know you've got a quality piece, a quality... Um, pick. This is just adding to all of the texture. It's adding another layer. So it's all about the layering. And I want to make sure that I don't cover up the sign. So I can bend these in any direction that I want. Alright, so let's see. I think we'll need one above. Yeah. And I might add this one down here. Just look, hold it up and look at it a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and snip off one of these. And put that right there. Okay. And I've got another one of these black things that I might put right there. All right, so let me go ahead and hot glue these in. And then I'll pick it up and let you see what I've done. So we're just, um, these are probably will, let's see. I don't know if I'll have to hot glue all of these. Yeah, I need to go ahead and get my glue <laughs> pan out because my glue gun is not keeping up with the demand. So let me just pull this out real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. So um, you could just play around, decide which ones you need to put a pick on. Usually, um, if the I feel that like this one is going to go, has to go pretty deep down in there. So I needed it to be a little longer. So that's why I put a pick on this one. Now, if there are times when the pick is, or the uh, stem is going to like melt away, when you put hot glue on it, then you're going to want to put a pick on that. And you want to make sure that the um, the glue catches some of the grapevine or if you don't you know if you don't it won't it won't stick to anything you want to make sure it sticks to something <clears throat> I'm gonna hold on to this I think I'm gonna put one right here All right, so this is what we have so far. You guys, I'm in the zone, can you tell? All right, so here we have, let me back up just a hair. You can see how the, the different layers, thank you. 
So you can see how just layering the same color, that's what I wanted to really bring to your attention, is just layering, it's the same color, it's just different textures, you guys. So it's black on black, but then we've got um, spiky with the curled, you know, softness of the fern. Um, it just gives, all of it is just really, um, gives just a different texture to it. All right, so we want to make sure, too, not to cover up the sign. So the next thing we want to do I was thinking <clears throat> is adding some ribbon just to soften things up a little bit. Now I have these flowers that I could also add in and almost could do it without even having a ribbon or anything like that in there. But I just love this ribbon. And you all know I'm a ribbon addict. So let me um, get that back up. All right, so let's see. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, so let me play around and then I'll explain when I come up with an idea. I kind of wanted, I wanted something going out throughout the whole thing. So something over here and maybe something over there and then ending it down there. All right, so um, let me think about how I'm going to do this. Go ahead and put get these. So let me put a pipe cleaner and let me measure that again to see if that's about the height that I want the ribbon. All right, so I am going to measure out twelve inch loops. So I lay it down on my mat and I just measure out twelve inches. Actually, I think I want a tail, so I'm going to do a little tail. So we've got this going on so, so far, and then I lay it down on the mat to 12 inches, and I bring it to the back, and I'm going to pinch it into my fingers, and I'm going to twist, and then measure out another 12 inches on my mat, and then bring it to the back, just like that, and then twist. All right, so now I need to wire this. That thing is smoking. Let me wire this together, and then, you know, what I forgot to do is put something under my glue pan, or it'll burn my table. So we've got this. I'm going to go ahead and put a pick on the end of this pipe cleaner, and I'm going to... Start it right there. So we've got that. And now, when I try to curl the ribbon, this has always been a big trick, you know, a big task for me. Something to always try to figure out is how to get this ribbon curled. I find that if I let it curl on its own and let it have its own, you know, mind, it tends to go a lot easier versus me trying to force it to do something um, on its own, you know, different. So you can see that it's wanting to al already curl in this direction like that. So I'm just going to keep it like that. I'm just going to try to keep that curl right there. So I'm going to come out just a little bit more. And I'm going to measure out about the same length of the loops. Just like that.
I think I'm going to do it right there. Let's see if we can move this one over here. Yep, yeah, right there. So that's going to be the next uh, pipe cleaner where I take the pipe cleaner and I secure it. See, these loops look a little bit bigger, but that's, I think they'll be okay. So I just take the pipe cleaner and I run it all the way down to about an, an inch, and then I'm going to trim it off, and then I'm going to put a, a steel pick on the end. And I'm going to come at this angle. So we're going to put it right, I'm trying to put it in the center of where I know I want to bow over here. So between here and there, where I started it, is where I'm thinking I want to bow. There. And you can't push it straight down, you have to put it in at an angle. You guys, if you enjoy my tutorials on how to make wreaths, I would wish you would consider joining my inner, I'm sorry, my wreath making of the month club. This is what exactly what I teach um, in my wreath making of the month club is how to make different wreaths like this. So this month I've already taught them how to make the Halloween wreath, the mailbox topper, and I taught them how to make a, the members how to make a, a football wreath, a fall football wreath. All right, so let me look. I'm thinking, I want to see if I can get this to turn maybe a little bit more. But if you, um, it's on sale right now this month if you join. You can save on your membership. Let's see, I'll go ahead and put that here so for you, what if you want to learn any more information on that. Alright, so I, I don't think I am going to curl it. I think I'm just going to keep it just like this. And make some more loops, loop de loos. Definitely trying to keep this wreath a little bit more simple. I think sometimes less is more, don't you? And I'm going to cut this off right there. So this is what we've got so far. So we've got the uh, sign and we've got all the picks and some of the ribbon. Isn't that cute? I think it's, start, it's starting to look really, really cute. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to trim off some of the um, or bend some of the pieces in the back that where the wire has started to the uh, what do you call these the steel picks I'm gonna just bend those in a little bit there but it 
it's turning out really cute. Now I'm going to go in and add some flowers. So I'm going to add these white flowers. This will definitely liven up the wreath and, and make it a little bit more, you know, less scary and creepy. if I want them long. I'm just going to keep these stems long for right now and that's what I always do decide to, to, before cutting them so I can decide if I want them long or if I want them short. Definitely want to shape them I'm cutting off some of the green too because I don't want so much green. In fact, I could cut off a little bit more. I'm going to cut this one. And then I'm just placing these around. All right, so I think I need to cut some of these off. So I'm just going to start separating some of them. so that we can spread them out just a little bit more. Let's see. One right up here. this one over this way. I want to make sure they're evenly distributed. This one's going to be a little bit shorter. All right, so once you like that placement, I'm just going to go in and hot glue them. If you keep your stems long, they add more dimension to the wreath. So they make the wreath just pop off the door. So it's not so flat. Let's see, where am I going to put that? Where did I pull that out of? Hold on, let me think. I'm going to put it right there. Okay. Let me see if I can show you what we've got. So this is what we've got so far. I'm loving the green now. Um, I probably need to move some of this out of the way just a tad bit. I want to make sure you can see the sign. It almost needs a little bit more white, but that's the only shrub. That's the only shrub. That's the only uh, bush that I got that had the white in it. So what I could do is find a, a piece. Well, I don't know. Will I use this one? I can find a piece that's long and then put it put it over there. But let's see. Let's before we do that. Let's keep. I was thinking about adding 
this orange feather, but I'm not sure yet. And there's a hole down here, so I need a I need a stem down there. And I have to just see if I want this feather on it. This is a faux feather. So far, I'm not loving it. I'm trying to think if I have any picks or anything that I could put on here. So I like that, and then let's see, where's this one? I misplaced my needle nose pliers when I cleaned up the shop. I don't know what, I bet the hubs took them. I bet the hubs came in here and needed some pliers. I guarantee you, who took them? I forgot to return them. But that's okay because I do it with his tools all the time. <laughs> so if you are new to the page, I don't know if you know this, but I run this business out of my home. I am in the garage of my house. I've turned it into a little... Um, crafting studio if you will and this is where I film my wreath making of the month club training videos um, and I do put together all my wreaths that I sell for my Etsy shop it took me um, a while to get to this stage took me years. It started um, on the table and the dining room table and then gradually um, added, you know, got a little bit further and then I moved some into the garage and then we had, you know, our cars here. My husband had his, all of his DJ equipment in the garage. So I just had a little corner and then I gradually started moving a little bit more and a little bit more. And then the hubs moved his DJ stuff out. <laughs> and now I've got the whole garage except for one little corner that he uses for his DJ equipment. And don't tell him that you know that's going soon. That'll probably be going soon. We'll see, we'll see. Got to give them a little bit of room, right? All right, I'm liking that. Let me hold this up. And I'm going to hot glue these in, and then I will show you what I've got. So I just go through and I just place them around evenly. Some are a little longer than others, and I can tell when I pull it out if I'm going to need to put a pick on there.
Okay. <gasps> Shedding. Flaking. All right, so this is what we've got. Isn't it cute? Can you see the orange? Can you see the orange feathers? So it adds another little spiky texture to it, doesn't it? It's really cute. I'm just trying to decide if I want one more little loop-de-loo of bows right here on the bottom to fill in. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a little loop-de-loop loop bow right there. <clears throat> so I don't have any other material, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've used up all of the spiky stuff, all of the black, and all of the feathers, and all I have left are is the ribbon. So I'm gonna, just going to try to fill up this hole right here with the ribbon. This will be interesting. If I do it right, it'll just look like one bow. All right. This is it. I love it. I think this turned out super cute. It's a little bit um, different, isn't it, than what you know you normally see for a Halloween wreath. It's got a lot of the black and the white which typically, um, you know, it's not very typical for a Halloween wreath, but then you throw in the orange. It's so cute. You could see the bow at the bottom where I did the double loop, so it just makes it look like it's a bow instead of two different pieces. I love the striped ribbon, how it, it goes through the wreath. Let's see, I almost could add another tail right there on the top this the ribbon adds the softness softness it makes you know it gives it a little bit of a softness to it let's see I don't know if that's going to catch Down in there. There we go. So I added this little tail, just a ribbon strip right there. Let's see if I can angle it the right way. Just this piece right there is what I added. Cute, cute, cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know. Um, you know, share the video. That just gives me a big virtual hug and lets me know that you enjoyed the video and that you want me to do more of tutorials like this coming on Facebook Live. Um, you can see that it, it doesn't take a lot of time 
to create something, you know, fun for the holidays. It just, um, you know, throw in some things in there. It's learning how to layer and learning the, the, the skills of the text, the different textures um, going together and then why I picked the color of ribbons and stuff like that. Um, if you're interested in learning more about wreath making, the art of wreath making, I'd be honored for you to join me this month in my, in my wreath making of the month club. And uh, we're gonna be doing some more videos this month. So we've got two more videos coming up and you can get all of the information that we've already taught this month, which is the Halloween wreath and the mailbox swag behind me. Um, and we've got a football wreath in there. So join me this month and save $8 off your membership. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. I know it's hard for me to concentrate on the wreath making and not see your questions and answer them right away. So um, I always come back in and answer as much as I can after the video is over. So don't, don't hesitate to ask questions. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope, I hope, I hope I'm a blessing to you. I mean, that's really what I feel called to do is to come on here, inspire you to try new things and inspire you to have fun with flowers. Um, and just to try, isn't it all about that? Just to try something different. Um, and you'll find that if it's not wreath making, it might be something else like painting, crocheting, candle making or whatever. If you find a hobby that you really, you can you know feel in your heart that you're supposed to be doing, it's such a stress reliever. So it helps, um, it helps on many levels. All right, so you guys, I hope I'm a blessing to you. You are truly a blessing to me. Thank you for all of you who shared it. And for all of the thumbs up and the hearts, I truly appreciate it. You guys have a very, very blessed night.